So we have seen the deterministic approach and the way uh, the hazards are, are treated in the safety analysis. Uh, we can have a look now on the uh, a complementary tool to the deterministic approach, which is a probabilistic uh, approach. Probabilistic, probabilistic safety assessment enables the estimation of accident scenarios, probabilities. It considers families of initiating events and includes the probability of failure of the various safety function. The probability of failure of safety function is derived from failure trees of individual components coming from experience data. Let's look at more details. So the purpose of these trees is to determine the probability of uh, consequences uh, on the fuel or, or on the core. And um, as mentioned uh, in the defense in depth, uh, if we start from uh, an initiator, in this example, uh, a spurious dilution, that is a reduction of the concentration of the boron in the, in, in the reactor core, there will be a first countermeasure, so such as, for instance, uh, the automatic uh, stoppage of this uh, dilution. Uh, and if uh, this one is not efficient, uh, a second uh, line of defense will occur with the uh, uh, the initiation of uh, a borification uh, system that will inject boron directly into the core. And so, depending on the, the probability of failure or success of uh, these two countermeasures, we can calculate the consequence. So, if we, uh, this is the way this uh, uh, event tree is built, so starting from initiator, and there are a very large number of initiator considers in a, in a complete PSA and the, the probability of occurrence of this initiator is uh, taken from uh, the experience. So if the first uh, uh, countermeasure is successful, of course there will be no consequence. Uh, if it's fail, the second uh, countermeasure will intervene. If it's a success, there will be no consequences, um, but if it's fail, there will be some consequences, of, such as uh, core damage or, or um, release of, uh, of activity. Now, the question is how to calculate the success or failure of this countermeasure. This is done through uh, uh, four trees, uh, such as, as this one, where uh, to, to calculate the uh, uh, probability of uh, success or failure, or in this case failure, of uh, uh, this countermeasure. The, the system uh, is split in various, uh, in its various components, and the, the probability of failure uh, of uh, any of these components uh, coming from the reliability database uh, of the plant is introduced in order and, and combine in order to uh, calculate this uh, probability of, uh, of failure of uh, this uh, countermeasure. Of course, we are taking into account not only the probability of uh, equipment failures, but also the probability of, uh, fa of human error of, or wrong uh, human action. So, through th this is a, a very schematic view of uh, probability safety assessments, uh, which uh, can give at, at the end calculating all the uh, initiators uh, to have the uh, a global probability of uh, unwanted uh, consequences and uh, also the possibility to prioritize the various sequence to look at those which are the most uh, uh, probable <coughs> and of course to uh, take uh, some additional measure uh, to reduce the probability of the most uh, important sequences. So there are several types of uh, probabilistic uh, safety assessment. Uh, three ma main, the level one, 
look at the, the probability of the core de degradation. Uh, the level 2 goes a step further and take into account the containment function because you can have some core degradation and if the containment function uh, plays its role there will be uh, no release but if there is a bypass or a leak in the containment you can have a, a radioactive release so level 2 allows to calculate this uh, probability of radioactive release and then there is a level 3 which calculates the impact on the public and environment of course this depends on uh, the direction of the wind during the, the release and the probability of the wind is not the same and also of course of the distance uh, of uh, the, the population Um, initially, PSA was considering only internal events, uh, but uh, now more and more uh, P probabilistic safety assessment, including hazards and mainly internal or uh, external hazards such as uh, fl flooding or seismics, are being developed, and, and now we have more global. Uh, probabilistic safety assessment covering all the different uh, risks. In uh, developing uh, a PSA and uh, uh, as you can see from the, the, the various elements there are uh, six main steps. The first is to identify the initiating events and again uh, if, even if we group then in some family in total, there are several uh, hundreds of initiating events. The uh, second step is to construct some scenario, taking into account some uh, thermodynamic calculation to see the consequence of uh, the uh, uh, initiating events uh, in terms of, uh, uh, for instance, uh, temperature or uh, defect in cooling. Then uh, we we need to identify the mitigating features, the uh, countermeasure mentioned in the uh, previous uh, slide, the various system that will intervene to uh, counteract the uh, the consequence of the initiating event. <coughs> this would allow the construction of fault trees uh, through the composition of the different. Uh, uh, system and their different components uh, the, uh, with the reliability data of the uh, pumps, uh, pipings, uh, uh, instrumentation and, and control system uh, combining all that uh, we can uh, construct the, uh, the fault trees to uh, calculate the, so the probability of failure of uh, the mitigating feature and <coughs> Then we will have the, uh, the defining the different hierarchy of sequences to look at those uh, which are the most uh, significant and which are the, uh, the, the, the first to, uh, to be looked at to define potential uh, additional measure. Uh, probably safety assessment has a lot of interest and, and provide a very good insight in the safety of a nuclear power plant. It's first an important complement to the deterministic approach. As mentioned previously, the deterministic approach focuses on some uh, specific type of uh, accidents and, and families of accidents. Uh, and, and the main purpose of them is to, uh, uh, to define and to design the safety system that should uh, be line of defense in, in uh, the various scenarios. Uh, a second interest is the identification of weak points uh, in the, the old uh, plant. Uh, through this uh, hierarchization of, of sequences, so to, to identify the most important ones will allow to uh, take additional measures to reduce this uh, probability. A third uh, interest is the identification of common mode failures. If you have a redundant system but they have some 
common points such as, for instance, uh, the air compressed system that will serve uh, uh, several valves. Uh, so, identifying these uh, commonalities, uh, which are sometimes uh, hidden in the, the complex arrangement of all the, the system, uh, is something very important to ensure that redundant systems are really redundant not only by their designs themselves but also by all the utilities and facilities that needs uh, to be available for the uh, redundant system to function. And if these common model failures are identified that uh, uh, will uh, uh, underline the need to put some diversity and, and between various systems and for instance if you have a first uh, train of a system uh, which is supported by uh, electrical pumps uh, it's better that the redundant one be uh, uh, powered by a, a steam driven pump uh, that will avoid any kind of uh, common mode failure through different way of actioning the, the pumps. Um, Last but not, not least is to uh, allow uh, a more balanced design uh, globally of, of the plant, ensuring that uh, the, the main, mo most important sequence have about uh, uh, the same order of probabilities. And, and for instance, if uh, a first run of a PSA shows that you have just one sequence that represents uh, more than half of the global risk, uh, you will certainly do something uh, to reduce uh, these parts.